Our next presenter this morning is Tattoo Gold Corporation, and presenting on their behalf is the company's president and CEO, Zach Deansdale. Exactly. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, again, Zach Deansdale, president of Tattoo Gold Corp. Uh, this is a company that I started about five years ago. Uh, in that five years, we've been uh, working in northern British Columbia, and just recently, uh, we moved into the Yukon, uh, into the site of the old Klondike Gold Rush. Uh, the main focus of our, our company is to explore for gold and silver. Uh, we've got a gold asset uh, that we have proven a deposit on uh, in northern British Columbia called the Tag, and uh, again, uh, in the Yukon, the Dan and Rosa Butte. So to give you a little history uh, about the Klondike, about 100 years ago, uh, Skookum Jim Mason, he's uh, a member of the Tagish Lake First Nations tribe. Uh, he left Tagish Lake in northern BC uh, to eventually discover placer, rich placer gold uh, deposits in Bonanza Creek in the Yukon. About a year later, amongst a series of um, financial recessions and bank failures, uh, not unlike what's just happened. Uh, news reached the United States, which, which eventually sparked the first Yukon Gold Rush in 1898. Now, over the next 110 years in that uh, direct area, over 20 million ounces of placer gold has been uh, taken out of the, the creeks and, and rivers in the Klondike, yet the source of those placers has yet to be discovered. So just as uh, Jim Mason started out on Tagish Lake, uh, we did as well. About four years ago, in 2006, we uh, optioned a, a uh, 2,500 uh, 2, hectare property on uh, the shores of Tagish Lake. Over the next four years, we've spent $4.2 million in exploration uh, and basically taken this property from a uh, drill discovery stage to an initial uh, 43101 initial resource calculation. Uh, British Columbia, as many of you know, is a very mine-friendly jurisdiction. Uh, we've got a stable regulatory and permitting environment. All of our permits in place uh, have been in place for about four years. And we've got a pretty uh, sizable area there with uh, just over 6,000 acres. This gives you an idea of where we are. We're basically, uh, you might as well be in the Yukon where, where we are in northern British Columbia. Uh, it's about as far north as you can get. Uh, it uh, is located quite uh, uh, uniquely close to a freshwater port at Skagway, Alaska, and uh, it's on the shores of Tagish Lake. There. The reason we're called Taku Gold is uh, we're located on Taku Arm of Tagish, Tagish Lake, and our uh, claims are to the north there. So to get into the exploration target, uh, we picked this property up from a geologist, Gary Thompson, uh, back in 2006. He had spent 12 years on the property, basically taking it up to uh, drill-ready status. So it was quite a unique property for us because really all we had to do was walk onto this property and uh, drill. Sounds easy, but uh, we, we went in there, there was absolutely uh, no infrastructure at that time, and uh, we went in, drilled uh, 12 holes, and hit very significant gold and silver on our first 12 holes. Uh, this is a major regional structure, it's four miles long. Uh, you can see the uh, series of red uh, checkpoints there. Uh, that is a, a four mile long fault structure, it's a splay fault off of the deep-seated Llewellyn Fault that goes all the way into the Yukon. Uh, we've got uh, up to 18.7 grams per ton from, from trenching and soil sampling uh, on surface. We've got bonanza-grade silver on surface. Uh, through drilling, most more importantly though, we've got up to 7.5 uh, seven grams per ton drilled and 300 grams per ton silver. Uh, a very important uh, piece of this is the width of the structure. The average width of our, uh, our mineralized structure is, is over 65 feet wide. It swells out to, uh, pinch, pinches to about 8 meters and, and swells to close to 60 meters wide. So that makes it amenable to, there's, it, it, all that means is there is enough tonnage there uh, to make it amenable to both an open pit or a uh, bulk, un, 
underground mining type scenario. So the, it's a sediment hosted, structurally controlled epithermal um, deposit. And uh, most importantly, these, are, these deposits tend to be uh, very large tonnage, low grade, uh, and they also tend to be the largest um, deposits in the world. So just to give you an idea of a few of them, Moral and Tau, uh, the Navachev deposit in uh, Namibia is probably the, the best example of, of this type of a deposit. So over the last four years, we've drilled 69 holes, um, average depth of about 160 meters, uh, that's 11,000 uh, meters of drilling. We've conducted an airborne survey, uh, soil geochemical survey, uh, as well as prospecting and trenching on, on numerous targets on our property. After those first 12 holes, that, that initial discovery we made, we uh, knew we were going to be in this area for uh, a long time. So we spent the uh, time, effort, and money to put in a fully winterized 20-man drill camp. And what this has done, it's taken our average drilling uh, per meter drilling costs down uh, by about a third, actually. Uh, uh, say, uh, by about 25%. Uh, so everything's in place. We've cut 12 kilometers of drill roads along this uh, six-kilometer fault. And, uh, the access to the area is excellent by barge. Uh, this is one of the deepest lakes in uh, northern British Columbia in the Yukon area. Uh, you can go all the way up to uh, Whitehorse and, and past on this uh, Tagish Lake. So it cuts down on cost. Basically, we don't have to helicopter everything in. Everything comes in on barge. Now, this is a photo. It may just look like a creek bed, but you're actually looking at a, a, a what could be a mine there. Um, the, <laughs> Discovery outcrop on the uh, Tag property uh, it is right at the beach on uh, Tagish Lake, and it's hard to see in this picture, but the uh, the white, the lighter colored rocks on the on the bed of this creek, uh, that's actually the quartz breccia stockwork veining. That's uh, you've got the hanging wall and the foot wall there. That's basically the uh, uh, the fault structure, and that runs for four kilometers. It's quite spectacular. We've had. Uh, Bob Moriarty, uh, he panned for gold here, uh, that was uh, two years ago, in 2008. Uh, we've had Newmont, uh, Agnico Eagle, Kinross, they've all taken a look at the property. Uh, it's a really a ge geologist's dream. 